Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Aho here with KissAndLog.com. Today we're going to continue on with our Class A amplifier, okay? The all of five. Uh, we're going to continue on with the power supply portion of it, okay? So I did do a video earlier on power factor, and I used this big old capacitor bank, the bridge rectifiers here, and this toroid, this transformer here, and we took some measurements, and I used this power factor meter. And with this meter, it would tell me real power, apparent power, and power factor. So today what I want to do is do it in microcap, the simulation tool. Okay, hopefully you have, all have that. It's free. It used to be 4700 bucks just about a year ago. It's free now. The guy retired, decided to give it away. So let me just kind of go over the power factor thing. Okay, now let's say this black thing's a voltage, the sine wave, and the red's the current. Okay. Uh, and the reason it's spiky like that is because the diodes, after, after once you go through the bridge rectifier, then as the voltage rises here, it forward biases one of the diodes in the bridge rectifier, well two of them actually, and then they conduct and they charge a capacitor and then they turn off. And then the next waveform comes along, it does it again. So you get these blips of current. Well like the meter, Okay, here, let me go over these equations. Uh, the parent power here is equal to, let's say if you had a multimeter reading the volts RMS at the input of your power supply, and you also measured the RMS current, you'd get a parent power. Apparently, that would be what it looks like the power is going into it. But it's not the real power. Some of that stuff's not usable, and the real power is only a fraction of that, okay? And if they're both sine waves and the, sine, and the current was just shifted, it'd make it easy to see because the current, when the current's zero, the voltage would, you'd have some voltage and vice versa. So you're not always getting power when you have current, or you're not always getting power when you have voltage. So it kind of throws things off. So you, with the sinusoidals, you could take this cosine theta and come up with the power factor, okay? And then that would tell you if you need 100 watts over here, and your power factor, for instance, 0.5, you go, wow, I need 200 watts over here. Because power factor is equal to the real power divided by apparent power. Or, if you, let's say in this equation, this is the same equation, I just moved things around. But if you said, well, I know what my apparent power is because I just measured it. I know the power factor is 0.5. So then you would know what your real power is. So... This is a common way to show the equation. Another one's with the cosine, but that only works if they're sinusoidal. If they're not, there's actually a distortion factor that happens too. So power factor turns into displacement, which is this, but it's also multiplied by this distortion factor, which is this. And that's one over square root of one plus THD squared. So those two things make up your power factor. In our simulation, what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at we're going to calculate this. We're going to measure this on our on our voltage waveform. We're going to measure this on our current waveform, and then we'll do the math and come out with parent power. But we can also very easy in the simulation just click on the volt power source, you know, the voltage source, and it'll tell us what the real power is. The way the meter would do it is it would act like a voltmeter. It would do both these things, multiply it together, and say, "Wow, there's the parent power." But it would also look at each one of these points, it would take so many samples and then multiply voltage times current, zero, 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 and you get zero all the way up to here, then you start getting a little power, you get peak power, and then zero, zero, zero all the way out here, again, you go through the same thing. So, calculating it that way, you'd get real power. So the meter can do it this way and this way, and once it's done that, it can do the math and show power factor. That's what we're going to do in our simulation, okay? So let's jump in that and let's just do it. All right, so let's go ahead and open up MicroCap 12. Now you can double click here. I've got it open, so I'm just going to click my toolbar and voila. <laughs> There's our schematic, guys. Now, this schematic I'll provide to anybody. Just send me an email and I'll send it to you. What this schematic shows is this portion right here, the rectifiers and, and these capacitors, all these resistors, this is on the board, the PCB board we tested in the prior video. So we're going to correlate the simulation results with those test results. 
So see that video so you can see how this correlates with that, okay? Okay, so you'll see the dual diodes and you'll see the four 10 millifarad capacitors across here. Each capacitor has 50 milliohms of ESR. There's two 10K resistors for the drain resistors and there's a 0.1 microfarad cap here with a five milliohm ESR cap, uh, resistor, okay? So I put all these resistors in separately just so we can click on those and, and adjust them. Okay, so then this will be the plus output, the minus output, and the return. And the return comes right down here and it's tied to the center of these two output windings on the transformer. So the transformer, this input circuitry I had off the board, and I had these two 8 ohm resistor loads off the board. Otherwise, the stuff in between uh, was on the board. So the transformer, the way it's hooked up, is, a, is the two windings are in series, and the center piece is tied to our reference, our ground. The plus side here is tied to these two diodes, so when there's plus, it hopefully will share between those diodes and come out here, and the minus will be on the bottom, and it'll be shared through those two diodes, hopefully. Probably not perfectly equal, but hopefully they'll share. And then when this goes minus, it'll come down this way through these two diodes, and this end will be positive down here. It'll go up to those. So yeah, that board just had uh, double diodes like this, so it just kind of looks kind of cluttery, I guess. Okay, now the transfer, the way I modeled it is I have uh, the inductance for the primary side, 3.43 Henry's for each coil, and they're tied in uh, parallel. You can see how the input comes to this guy and to this guy. If you're in the US, you'd do it that way. If you're somewhere where you have uh, 220, then you'd put these guys in series. So you just break these connections, tie them together, put them in series. In parallel, you have the three ohms. It's the DC resistance for this coil, and three ohms here. And this one millihenry is the leakage inductance for this coil. And there's one millihenry here. Then on the output, I just have the resistance of the secondary winding, and another one here. And then here, I'll just open up the transformer so you can see. That is just the ratio, one to, I, I got 4.5, and I've got these, you know, this is just a transformer that came out of the library, and basically I just want it for the ratio. So I'll close that. So I've got the, kind of the parasitics modeled, and the turns ratios with these, with these in, uh, coils here. So right now I've got the thermistor, he's 10 ohms, and then I've got a series resistance. And that is 100 milliohms. That's just so I can select that for current. And that is in series here with our power source, our voltage source. So this is where we plug to the outlet and we get a sine wave, 169 volts peak, roughly 60 hertz. I'll double click that. And on these tabs right here, you can see sine waves chosen. And right there, you can see this information in here in the bottom. And I got 169 volts peak and 60 hertz there. And then up here, it puts the information there for me. And then I click on this box to show it on the schematic. And there we go. So that's our power supply, the way we test it on the bench. And we're gonna, we're gonna get the current here. We'll get the RMS current, we'll get the RMS voltage, we'll multiply them together and get the, the uh, apparent power. And then we'll click on this guy and the simulation model will do the math and calculate current and voltage point by point and come up with the actual power. So let's go ahead and run the analysis. So I come up here to analysis, click on that. This pull down menu has a transient analysis, but I want to come down to this probe transient. I'll click on that. And it pops up with all these windows. And you can see the busy bar down here. And we're collecting a lot of points, and I'll show you why in a minute. What I wanted to do is I want the voltages and everything to come up stabilized before we take the power measurements. Uh, so I'm just going to take a section of the reading 
of the stabilized portion. So I'll show you that here in a moment. Okay, it looks like it's done. And now let me explain this window up here. This window up here, here I can close this window for a sec. And what I do is I come up here and say vertical, oh, sorry, scope. And, and then I come down here to measurements, click on that and it comes up this window and then I can say add and that's what I did, I added these. You have a pull down menu, it shows RMS for the current voltage and then average for the power and then you have your expression and this window that pops down and so you can see here I'm going to cancel this window out so you can see these three themes are over here I chose to look at. Uh, I guess that's as squished as I can make that waveform. I was trying to pull that window up. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this simulation. Now, here I go, vertical, get a probe. I want a voltage probe. Let's do the voltage. Okay, there's our 120 volts RMSN, 60 hertz. See, 169 volts peak almost. And if I get the other cursor, you come down here and see left and right cursors, delta. There's a 16.7 milliseconds, so that's 60 hertz. Okay, then now let's get the current. Whoops, let's get my current probe right here. Come down here. Now, there you go, there's your current. Okay, let's make sure this window is selected. And then see this guy right here, maximize. So, yeah, there's a nice view of the voltage and current. And you can see how bad this is. It. You get a lot of current charging when that uh, voltage is allowed to forward bias the diode, and then practically nothing. So let's go look what the power is gonna look like. We'll come back up here to these double windows. We'll get the schematic there. And now let's go up to Oh, by the way, you see in this window here, we have our 119.5 volts RMS and our 3.137 amps RMS. Okay, then let's come here vertical and get a power probe. And let's go look at the power on this voltage source, what's coming in from our wall. So we click on that. There you go. Here, I'll make that window big again. Yeah, look at that. Whenever you see a current pulse, you get a power pulse and of course they're all positive currents going negative voltage negative you know those things multiplied together gives a nice positive power pulse and if you look at the scale over here guys that's 1000 watts that's 1.5 thousand so you got some pretty high peak powers because you got some high peak currents that peak current right there i have to come down here and select the current and then I'll get my cursor up here again. Whoops, let me get my cursor over here. And look at that, 7.15 amps. 7.2 amps, basically. All right, so now, here, let's get these side-by-side -side windows again. And what we want to do is, that's our real power, 282, and that is just about what we saw on our test bench. Here's the voltage and current, they're all pretty much what we saw. So let's do the math right here. And you actually have a calculator right here. See that calculator? Click on that. There's a little did you know fact. Okay, I'll type in my 119.501 volts times 3.137 amps. And see that? 374.875 watts. Okay. Now, that's the apparent power. Now let's divide 282.214 divided by this 374.875. Enter. Look at that. Uh, 752.8 milli, so 0.7. So 0 0.75 power factor. That is pretty darn close to what we saw on our test bench. So there we go, our simulation file. 
looks like it's working pretty well. So I think our circuit, the simulation circuit looks pretty good. And here I'll go ahead and close the simulation file. And there's our schematic again. All right, so we, we can simulate output voltage ripple and all that play around with capacitor size. And we can look at uh, power dissipation on different components and all that stuff. So we'll do that in another video, okay? Hey guys, did that make sense? Uh, I hope so. Um, let me know what your comments are, your, your ideas and all that kind of stuff. And I hope that helped. And for those trying to use microcap, another example of how to use microcap. And, oh, there's one more thing. If you guys want the schematic file, uh, send me an email. I'll send it to you. And if you've sent an email for this, the amplifier schematic for microcap, and if I haven't sent you the file, it's because I probably missed it or something, so I'm sorry about that. Send me the email again, and I'll look for them, and I'll send you out the schematics. All right, I want to thank my patrons for all the support and everything. I want to thank all you guys for watching your videos and supporting the videos. Thanks a lot, guys, and we'll see you next time.